and welcome to Microsoft Virtual Academy. We are getting started with Template 10. We've talked about the Behaviors library that ships with the Template 10 library, but Behaviors have a companion, and that is actions, things that actually occur. <laughs> they are, so they're making a difference somehow. So often a behavior has two options of either extending a control or causing actions to be invoked. These are those actions. There are several that ship with Visual Studio, and there are several that ship with Template 10. Yes, indeed. Let's talk about open flyout action. The open flyout action. So One so. of, I think, seven that ship, at least right now, with the library. Yep. The of open flyout action. So a flyout is something you can attach to a button, and you click on that button, and then a flyout appears, and it's na na natively implemented. But you can also implement a, a flyout on just about anything, including yes. an image or a grid or just about everything. But uh, there or a is push no, pin on a map control. Or a push pin on a map control. Excellent example. And there's no native way to invoke the flyout to open. Wouldn't it be great if there was, and we could do it with an action, some sort of declared behavior. Funnily enough, here's one we prepared earlier. Great. <laughs> Show it. <laughs> Show us the syntax. OK, so we've got the open flyout action. And in effect, it's just attached to a button in this particular scenario. Mm -hmm. And we've got the attached flyout. So we've got, we specify the format of the flyout there. You don't have to do it this way. You can have it as a resource that's declared somewhere mm -hmm. and then attach it using a static resource reference, which just happened to be expansive here. And then we've got a behavior that attaches to it. And we have an event trigger behavior. Yes. So we mentioned previously, there's two types of behaviors. There's the extension behaviors that add capability to a control, mm -hmm. and then one that listens to triggering an event and then can fire an action. And now we're talking about the types of actions that can be implemented by these triggers. So in this uh, simple syntax here, you're demonstrating that when, it is, when this element is tapped, then you call open flyout. And open flyout action in this case goes to the, the attached flyout of the control, but there you can also attach it to another control's flyout as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the open flyout. There's sometimes there's no native way to invoke the flyout and show it. Now there is. Yeah. Typically, you just create something in your code behind. Yeah. That would uh, use the uh, flyout base to actually go and find the attached flyout if it existed on the control. This just does it all for you. So step one is to show the flyout. Wouldn't it be great if there was some sort of action to then hide that flyout? It almost seems like we should have called it hide instead of close. But there you go. Ah, that's what we should have done. Yes, hide job. Oh boy, let's deprecate it. Yeah, it's done. The, uh, it's okay, out. so it's called close flyout. Mm -hmm. And what is the scenario where this would be interesting to you? Well, what happens if that, open, that opening flyout has a nice form field, something like you're going to search, let's say, and then a button or a filter. And you type in the filter, and then you have a button to apply that filter. When you apply it, why have that uh, pop-up still be open, that flyout still be open? Mm -hmm. It'd be great if it was closed. It'd be neat if you could attach a behavior and then an action to that button. So when you click it, it also applied the filter, but also closed the flyout that it's in. That's what the close action does, close flyout action does. Yeah, so what we have here is we're showing the syntax where we're declaring a flyout. This is probably going to be declared somewhere within a resource or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we have a UI in there, stack panel, text box, pretty much creating what we show up on the top right there. That's right. We've got a bat button that we attach a behavior that's an event trigger yes. type of behavior. And there we have our closed flyout, which will automatically look up the visual tree to find any attached flyout. That's right. Or contained flyout. Uh, another common problem that's simply solved in an easy way with this little action. Yeah. And uh, it is what it is. If you were going to do this in your application, you would do it exactly the same way. We just encapsulated it inside an action. Sounds good. All right. So we have the open and close flyout. The third one, uh, which is very sophisticated, is the conditional action. So here's what's happened. I click the button, and then I have actions under a, of a, a click behavior. And so, but what if those actions are still not appropriate? Just because you click the button doesn't mean that the action should be invoked. So perhaps a checkbox, let's say it's a submit button, a checkbox is required. And so I can't allow the action of submit until you've also checked the checkbox. So for that, we have created a conditional action, which is unlike normal actions, because a normal action doesn't have actions as its children. Mm -hmm. So this would be a three-tier. You would have the behavior, that's the event that causes this to be invoked. Then in between the actual action that's occurring, you have the conditional action that says is, and then you have all kinds of conditions. Yes. Let's take a look at the syntax. You can do all manner of different things. As you mentioned, there's an operator for is true, and there's a number of other operators and so on that could be supplied there, as well as you know, having the value 
that's being evaluated mm. for that condition. And so, you know, that, that's very, very powerful. There's, there's some people that might uh, look at this and be a little bit concerned in terms of, you know, you're expressing business logic here in something that's mm. embedded in your view, and you might make an argument that uh, it will perhaps be better in a view model where it could be tested and so on and so forth. We're not turning around and saying that this is the only way that you should be doing these things, but it is certainly a very powerful capability to have in your view. And without a doubt, you have the capability of not checking to see whether or not the checkbox is checked, but checking to see if your view model says is allowed. Mm -hmm. That's certainly also the capability as well. Um, there are so many sub pieces to this one because um, it checks to see whether or not a value is null, whether a value is not null, whether true, false, equals, there's all, or not equals. I mean, yes. there's, there's a bunch of them. And so I think you'll find the conditional action quite rich and um, just another way of you declaring logic inside your application. Just another Hopefully piece in the puzzle. View. That's right. Hopefully with view logic, not, not data logic. I, yeah. you're, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. All right, so that yeah. is the conditional action. Yep. Next one. This is focus. One. This is a nice easy Yeah, one. this is, it does what it says on the tin. Yes, focus action. The focus action, uh, when your form view loads, wouldn't it be great if you could specify which form field had the focus when you first load, right? So that just makes sense. You want that to be the way that it is. This is what it is. You add a uh, you add a behavior. So, for example, loaded might be the behavior that you have on your page, or on a text box, wherever it is that you want. And then you add the action, which you can target a different object if you want, and then it sets the sets the focus. Yep. Object focus. Incidentally, you you might have come across challenges with uh, getting focus on your controls, and generally the issue is that you have something else in your visual tree that's grabbing focus at another point. Mm -hmm. So if you start running into those, stop breaking down your visual tree and working out what places are either getting focused programmatically or it's a default behavior in there. It's a common scenario that people run into. Yep, uh, another thing that you might actually attach this behavior to is a data trigger where you may be, um, let's say you have first name and last name as two fields and you have a field that says whether or not it's valid. And so valid, first name and last name are valid. When it's not valid, you could bring the user's attention to it by setting the focus to the first name. So that's Lots nice. of fun uses. Lots of fun uses, easy enough, and uh, that's the focus action. Okay, right. next we have the message dialogue action. Mm -hmm. Now this, this is pretty easy, cool. Easy, easy little scenario here, and uh, it is cool. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty cool. Uh, three quick properties, just the title, content, and OK text. This is certainly not an interactive dialogue. That's not what this is meant to be. This is meant to just quickly show a message to the user so they know what's going on and you can convey something to them. Now, why are these properties title, uh, content, and OK text all exposed? Partly so you can set them, but mm -hmm. also so you can bind to them because it might use resources instead because OK may not be the term that you want to use. It'd be depending on your culture. Yeah, you know, so it allows it to be uh, globalized. Mm -hmm. You might put it's all right. It's all right. It's OK. It's all right. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, you know, the event occurs, whatever the behavior that calls it, calls this action, as soon as it does, uh, message dialogue is actually not what appears. It is a content dialogue yes. inside XAML. Yeah. So it's much better looking than a message dialogue. Yeah, a message dialogue suffers the challenge of uh, repeating the title. So you appear, it appears in the title bar as well as in the co content, whereas a content dialogue is actually formatted much better. So we switched over to using that behind the scenes. That's right. Template 10 making your life a little bit better. A little bit better. <laughs> All right, speaking of dialogues, we also have... Now, hang on, we haven't uh, talked through the syntax here. So we've got the oh, 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 yeah. button content uh, showing delete. Here's our behavior. We've got an event trigger behavior again that hooks to the click event. Mm -hmm. And then we have our message dialogue action. So clicking on the button will then show this dialogue. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, we Previously, we were talking about the conditional uh, action. Yep. And you might actually have a condition that says, you know, if it's not allowed for whatever, mm -hmm. the action you take is a message dialogue that says this is not allowed because of this reason. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Required. Yeah, you could, you could do that. <laughs> are you sure? That's what yeah. the default text is, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, but you, you can only say OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, gosh. I just killed my shins. Oh, that's All awesome. right. That's terrific. All right, so that's the message dialogue. It's a nice little action. Well, I mean, basically, you know, this is your timeout action. Yeah, here comes the timeout <laughs> action. Let's pretend you just hurt yourself really bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do want to call a timeout, but Barry was asleep. Lost the that controls. solitary tear. <laughs> <laughs> Must bleed out. All right. The uh, 
timeout action is pretty great. The timeout action is very similar, actually, to the conditional action in that it has child actions. And so what it does is, as soon as the behavior is invoked and that calls the action, the action then starts a timer that waits for whatever period you set in milliseconds. So um, we use this in the uh, template to demonstrate the busy, the busy, sig the okay. busy screen, right? So we, it actually is that there's an action that shows busy, and then the timeout action is a five-second delay that hides busy. And so you can do both that way. Mm -hmm. And so it might be very handy, but the sort of thing where you want to respond to something, but you don't want to do it right away for whatever reason. Maybe this doesn't fit your scenario, so you can leave it alone. Maybe it does, and this will save you a little bit more coding. Yeah. Nice and useful. That's right. That's right. The timeout action. Okay. There's a whole library of actions here, and you also get actions with Visual Studio as well. Together, you can declare a pretty rich interface, and uh, you don't want to misuse this or abuse this, I guess, by moving all the logic out of your view model into your, into your view. But at the same time, if it's just UI interactions, this is the right place for it. And there's a lot of flexibility here in the ones that ship with Template 10. They're free for you, fun to use. <laughs> Good luck.